Perfect Balance Healthcare presents Lick, Stick, and More with your host, Dr. Nandita Kuti. Join me to explore the minds of thought leaders as they share golden nuggets on the impact of faith integration in practice, professional development tips, and innovative solutions to bring you beyond ordinary healthcare. Thank you all for joining me for another episode with me, your host, Dr. Nandita Kuti. I have with me today a friend and just a delightful soul, Dr. Marina Booksov. I know that you are a registered doctor of pharmacy, a health coach, a clinical herbalist, and a lifelong learner of the healing arts. Uh, and also you offer great educational webinars. Um, there's a ton of experience you got from working in Radical Herb. Also a wellness writer for Jejun Magazine, which Sabrina uses her multidisciplinary background to educate patients about the least invasive methods, most natural methods of healing the spirit, body, and mind. And her truly holistic approach helps women embody the best versions of themselves. And so when she's not studying, Marina likes to dance, paint, and tinker with various concoctions, tea blends, meals, DIY projects. And she lives with her husband, toddler, and two mischievous kittens in New York City. Marina, thank you so much for joining me this morning. I have coffee, but I've infused ginger, clove, cardamom, cinnamon, mm. mint. I have a problem just drinking coffee. And it's because like you, I have an affinity for herbs and spices and all of the goodness that God has provided for us here on earth. What does it mean to be an herbalist? And what does it mean to be a functional medicine pharmacist? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on here. It's truly an honor and a pleasure. Um, second of all, the coffee, you know, coffee is an herb too. It's a seed, the bean is a seed. So, uh, it's funny because herbalists, you know, uh, pride themselves on knowing many herbs and using many herbs in cooking and drinking, but coffee is also an herbalist favorite because it is to a plant. That's really the philosophy. It's really herbalism is about, right relationship with plants and humans and a reciprocal relationship where we don't just use and use and use and abuse like I was saying because it's very easy for use to turn into abuse and misuse um, but it's about recognizing how we can reciprocate and how we can also give back and not just destroy but also have this symbiotic relationship so that's what an herbalist is. Um, we clinical herbalism in particular. We study how um, this relationship can really benefit human health. So, as I was mentioning, the body, mind, and spirit. Plants are actually applicable in all of these areas. So I think that's what I find as the biggest distinction between other areas of medicine and medicinal study is that we often say, okay, like what's the best, most safest, you know, most effective remedy, um, whether in a natural world or not, we try to have clinical data and all of that is great. And herbalists too utilize data and look at that. Um, however, I really don't see other disciplines really focusing on this relationship as much. And so substituting something, you know, for in a supplement form, also in a bottle, also in a pill versus something synthetic in a bottle and a pill is a little different than actually using the whole entire plant and using food as medicine. So that's really the biggest difference in herbalism and other modalities. As far as functional medicine, it's considered to be a branch of integrative medicine. So it is a branch of like this discipline that herbalism is also part of. So integrative natural medicine, right? But it's a branch that specifically what distinguishes it is the approach and a systematic approach of both seeing the macrocosm of the person and also the microcosm because allopathic medicine really excels in looking into each cell, right, and breaking things down and specializing in little uh, specific areas. But what functional medicine does is really connect all these areas. So it connects the knowledge of the inner working of the body in each cell, but also kind of zooming out and looking at the whole body and seeing a pattern and really approaching health in a very systematic way where you're really trying to rebalance and get down to the root cause of the dysfunction and treat the person there rather than just the symptoms. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And 
you know, you and I connected on that piece because when I started Perfect Balance Healthcare back in 2017, what I used as a vehicle to really reach my patients and what I found passion with to actually start the practice was tea. I was just so grateful to have received a study abroad education in China and Japan to have a chance to interact with tens of thousands of years of knowledge of the benefits of herbs. Um, but what I really liked in particular was this was an avenue for me to open up conversation with patients about their health from a holistic perspective. And little did I know was, was I was a functional pharmacist without knowing that there was a term to coin what I was doing, looking at the underlying issues that were contributing to a patient's need for synthetic medications and helping them to understand that there are organic approaches to you know, de-prescribing and, and getting off of medications that you don't need and that are band-aids for the problem and recognizing and appreciating the advancements that we've had in medicine to treat more severe and complicated illnesses, but realizing that what we have here on earth, what God has given us is sufficient for us to heal um, from the inside out and looking at nutrition and looking at spiritual practices and just lifestyle management from a whole, I felt like the E part of the soap note was graded with the least percentage weight, you yeah. know, going through school, but it was the most important aspect to me at really making sure the patients were educated from a holistic perspective on what they need to do in their lives to help change um, the way that their body was responding health wise. And so I, I really appreciate that you also took a, an approach of I'm going into the functional medicine um, realm and saying, Hey, I'm not just an herbalist. And I'm not just looking at the nutritional aspect, but I'm doing this to kind of lead you into seeing that this is more than just a diagnosis. You know, this is a full life situation that we have to consider when we're treating our patients. So I wanted to read you a, a piece of scripture from Genesis because I spent a lot of time in Genesis this weekend and I came across Genesis um, 1 29 and it says, and God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you, it shall be for food. All of this is, is given to us and is readily available to us for us to use. And even throughout the Bible, there are five different herbs that are specifically mentioned for medicinal use. So when people say, oh, um, does that stuff even work? Is it really effective, um, more effective than medication? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, the scriptures even, even show that it is, it is profitable for us for healing and more, more importantly, so um, that leading people to, to spiritual health and, and pointing them to the greatest healer is just the most important thing that we can do. Yeah, I, I remember um, when I was out in green market events, and I had patients come to my booth to talk to me about uh, some of these teas and the ways that it can help them with, with really finding relief with their health problems. And they find out I'm a pharmacist, you know, and their, their whole expression changes. They're like, what do you mean? You're a pharmacist and you're telling me not to take anything synthetic and that you're, you're, you're steering me towards right. organic approaches. That doesn't make any sense, but it's like, but it makes perfect sense because we're experts in medicine and food yeah. medicine, you know, and so it, it's kind of just shifting that mindset that we have about what it means to be a pharmacist, mm -hmm. you know, and what we can do. Um, yeah, the roots of pharmacy are yeah. herbalism. They're exactly. And that's just not that something that's common knowledge. They, they picture um, just us behind the counter, or us in the lab, you know, and and again, it's not to say that we haven't made significant advancements in, in the science realm um, with, with creating and with actually using what God has provided us to, to help patients in need of critical uh, conditions. But we have heavily discounted the basic treatments, you know, Absolutely. Um, the low hanging fruit, that image of the pharmacist that has only been for the last like 70 years or so. And before that, it was us compounding from crude herbs, you okay. know, and that image has been completely erased. Mm -hmm. So tell me what is raw fork? How do you start to create what doesn't exist? And where do you find the faith to be able to do something like that? So raw fork is the name of my LLC. So my corporation, my brand, um, and under that is everything that I do. Um, so legally, this is my business name. And I have 
um, decided to brand myself that back in 2016, when I was not even sure where, again, where it was all going to lead. Time I was actually into raw foods, so that probably influenced it. But also, um, I was thinking metaphorically, you know, raw is a symbol of pure. And so like really feeding yourself, not just food wise, but everything, you know, body, mind and soul feeding yourself the purest materials, ingredients, um, consuming on all these levels, the more pure and raw things, so that we can be the best versions of ourselves and humanity also. So it's really all about like being clean and leaving behind us also clean. Mm -hmm. And so under raw fork, I tried, you know, different things, including also tea blends and tea parties, functional medicine, tea blends, different ways of utilizing my knowledge on nutrition and herbalism. And eventually now I'm working one on one with a private clients to help improve their health, as well as I'm teaching other pharmacists and other healthcare practitioners step into these roles and learn clinical herbalism as well and utilize it in their own practices. Absolutely. Yeah, I wanted to get into that a little bit. I saw that you have joined forces with Farm to Table. A lot of my clients are trying to figure out how do you step into remote you know, management of patients' health? How can you help them and doing it from an organic perspective? So Farm to Table is a telehealth platform run by pharmacists. So um, I joined their team and we do also collaborate with other healthcare providers. We don't take insurances, but some of the labs might be able to work with insurances. So it is still cash-based. You could get access to patients that you wouldn't be able to re uh, reach on your own. At the same time, um, you know, you do have to pay a percentage as part of the platform as using the platform. Right. This is, I was, I was speaking with a doctor um, last week about the consequences of group practice versus individual. And yours has definitely evolved over the years as such as well um, as my own. Uh, and so I just wanted to hear a little bit about, uh, I know you do a little bit of wellness writing as well. The reason I brought up farm to table and some of these other things that we're doing is to encourage pharmacists to, to think outside of the box, create what doesn't exist. And that yes, it's possible to manage patients from an organic holistic approach and it be sustainable, whether it's cash-based or reimbursable, you could speak with Marina or I about either, and we'd be happy to guide you in creating something like that. How can pharmacists be encouraged to build their own consulting practice? Well, I think it's all a matter of risk management, really. So, and I mean, also faith, you're not going to know right away how to uh, be successful in this other realm that you've never had uh, set foot in before, right? So it is a matter of some time as well. It could be that you have to hire a coach to help you learn the ropes. It could be that you join a team that you pay a sort of fee on, but then they really train you in how to um, build up your own business. But either way, you're probably going to have to spend some time, money and energy re-educating yourself in this new venture. So it's not just going to be like overnight success. Now you're successful in a totally different field. So you just have to, you know, manage your expectations. Absolutely. We all have a purpose uh, to serve and we have to really figure out how we're going to live that out to the best of our ability. So if you had to pick one resource to equip pharmacists who are interested in leading their patients to organic approaches to health, what would you pick? For me personally, I love the one-on-one -on -one coaching because it's really customizable to me. And that's where I see the most impact and on my own business. And some people may thrive in like, uh, you know, just like college where you have 200 people in the same class as you. So it depends on how you thrive best. And for me, I really found the one-on-one -on -one mentorship really helpful for me as well as experiencing something. So when you mentioned me going into Radical Herb Shop and having my own internship there and securing that for myself, first of all, and second of all, learning whether or not this would be even interesting to me. And once I knew by experience, yes, this is interesting, I want to do this, that really secures my faith and my drive to keep going forward. So I think it's mentorship and experience um, to see what you like and what fits best. I personally also mentor pharmacists and other professionals in this, as I was mentioning. So my program teaches you to have the didactic clinical expertise in herbal medicine, as well as showing you the ropes of business and how to set all of that up. We will definitely be checking you out. Thank you so much, Dr. Buxoff, for coming on and sharing with us all things herb and functional medicine. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much. You're welcome. 
Thank you for listening to this episode of Lickstick and More. Subscribe and follow us on YouTube and all the social media sites at Perfect Balance Healthcare, or visit us anytime at pbh.life.